go to the Word of God. And if you will turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus, um, same place I was the last time, Exodus chapter 10. Hallelujah. I don't know if this is one of those periods of times when I get stuck in a portion of Scripture. Amen, amen. Exodus chapter 10, and uh, I want to read from verse 24. This is the children of Israel in Egypt. God has raised up a deliverer in the person of Moses, and Moses has a message for Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go. And uh, the Bible says that Pharaoh said, I don't know who the Lord you're talking to me about is. And uh, he refused to listen to what Moses was saying. Although he was plagued many times. Verse 24. And... Uh, Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord only. Let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Verse 26. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to the service to service the Lord our God, and we know not what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. Christopher, once again, I ask you to pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, Lord, that once again, as we look into it, I pray that you may speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. Lord, touch us by the ministry of your word, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. 400 years had passed since the children of Israel had migrated to Egypt, and it started as a wonderful experience because Joseph was... Um, the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. And uh, they had what even Pharaoh himself called the best land, the land of Goshen, and there they lived. Hallelujah. But God had given a prophecy to Abraham generations before that, that the children of Israel would be in captivity for 400 years. And, but after that, God would visit them and would bring deliverance. And I just stop to let you know that God knows your life. And he has a predetermined plan for you. And it's not part of God's plan for you to live an ungodly and a sinful life and upon death, for him to tell you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said that he came, that you might have life and have that more abundantly. Hallelujah. And God's word is sure. The 400 years in Egypt is ending. And God has raised up a deliverer in the person of Moses. 
They served the Egyptians for many generations, working to make bricks and also to build the cities of the Egyptians. And it reached a point in their life where their children were being ripped from them and being killed at the dictates of Pharaoh. And there is a parallel with this today because the devil, hallelujah, is attempting to destroy our young people. Amen, amen. But here is Moses. And Moses comes before Pharaoh. And I want to look at verse 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses, sorry, verse 25. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. You know, um, the message didn't change. It didn't change. Genesis, uh, Exodus, sorry, twi um, 8 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, and what's the message? Let my people go. What to tell Moses, um, Pharaoh? Let my people go, that they may serve me. And during the course of the next few chapters, each time Moses goes to Pharaoh, it is always the same message. Verse 20 of that chapter, you will see it says, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. That's God's message, that they may serve me. Chapter 9, verse 1, it ends. The message does not change. Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 9, verse 1, what does he say? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Chapter 9, verse 13, what does he say? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Chapter 10, verse 3, what does it say? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Amen. The, the, the message, hallelujah, the demands made do not change. Praise God. I said the demands made do not change. Hallelujah. Amen. It has not changed. A woman still must not wear man's clothes. It's still the same thing. Praise God. I'm going to continue preaching it the same way. Hallelujah. Her hair must be uncut. For, can you imagine, Christopher, there are multitude of churches if I stood in, in there and said what I just said. People would be looking at me strange. But you read your Bible, the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul told the Corinthians that a woman's hair is not to be shorn or shaven. And if it be shorn, hallelujah, amen, she's not to cut her hair. Let me tell you, the message has not changed. Marriage is still between a man and a woman. Hallelujah. And being a man and a woman is something biological. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a man has is different from what a woman has. That's what determines your sex or your gender, whichever way you want to do. Premarital sex is still a sin. Praise God. A homosexual lifestyle is a sin. Church attendance is not an option. It is mandatory. Oh, hallelujah. The message, I, I'm just trying to tell you some things that don't change. Amen. Hallelujah. The man is still the head of the home. Wine is still a mocker. 
strong drink is still raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Hallelujah. The Bible still says in the book of 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. It has not changed. Amen. Acts 2.38 is still God's plan for man's salvation. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It has not changed. It has not changed. From the time it was preached in the early church in the first century, the message is still the same. Praise God. Hallelujah. Acts 2.38 is still relevant. Amen, amen, amen. And if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, friend, hallelujah, I'm willing to baptize you in Jesus' name. And it's not about, it's not about church membership. It's not about church membership, but it's about doing what is right before God. I have baptized people who never once visited my church, but because they came to the revelation that baptism in Jesus' name is the correct method. Hallelujah. And, and Moses was consistent in what he was telling Pharaoh each time. Hallelujah. To let him know that the message of, from God was let my people go. And you know, hallelujah. People would love if it ends there. Let my people go. People want deliverance. But there was a second part. You know why God saved you? You know why God's going to take you out of the mess that you're living in? The life of sin and corruption and filthiness and wickedness? That you would serve him. Hallelujah. You know why God was taking those people out of slavery and their condition? Hallelujah. It's because he wanted a people who would serve him. Amen. Later on, he would tell them, I'm going to make you a nation of priests. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You see, as Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh kept compromising. And that's what the devil will do when you want to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. In, in, in the book of, of Exodus chapter 8. Hear what he says. When, when Moses. Um, Exodus 28 verse, verse. Exodus 8 verse 25. When Moses told. Pharaoh let my people go. And Pharaoh called. For Moses. And for Aaron. And said, go ye, go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. Or in other words, it's all right to have a little bit of religion. Hallelujah. Pharaoh was all right with them, amen, sacrificing to Jehovah God, the great I am, but he said, I want you to do it in the land. Hallelujah. And, and that's what the devil, the, uh, too many people claim Christianity and they're still living in the world. Compromising. Hallelujah. And that's what Pharaoh said. Sacrifice to God in the land. Hallelujah. Here is here is, here is Moses' response in the next verse. And Moses said, it is not meat so to do. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it is not enough to worship God. We have to worship, uh, you know, from the beginning, you know what the message was? We go in three days into the wilderness to serve God. Hallelujah. 
God's word to his people. Were you going three days into the wilderness to serve me? Hallelujah. And, and, and Pharaoh is making a compromise. You don't have to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes people look at a Christian who is a committed child of God. Hallelujah. Once the door of the church is open, that person is in church. And they don't understand it. And they say, you don't have to go to church all the time like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell that old devil in your face. Amen. 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 It's not enough just to worship God. It's not enough just to worship God. Hallelujah. My God, I go on, on social media platform. I go on Facebook. I go on Instagram. Hallelujah. And everybody, hallelujah, has something spiritual saying on, on those um, social media platforms. Everybody is, is at some point saying something about God. But that's not enough. We must worship him in the manner he has made known unto us. And where do you start? I quoted that scripture earlier. It's Acts 2 and verse 38. You need to repent of your sins. You need to repent of your sins. And after you repent of your sins, you know what you need? You need water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So first of all, he said, you can stay in the land. And, and uh, my God, hallelujah. And, and you, you can worship, you can worship God in the land. Praise the Lord. You know what Pharaoh knew? If, he, if they would stay in the land, he would still have control over them. And that's why the devil has control over people's lives. Because, uh, amen, they are staying in the world. You need to give up your clubbing. You need to give up some of the friends that you hang out with. You need to change some of the things that you are doing. Hallelujah. Because the devil is still going to have a hold over you. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we continue looking in, in Exodus 8 and verse 28. Um, the request is made again. And Pharaoh said. I will let you go. I will let you go. You see, hallelujah, resist the devil. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Hallelujah, resist the devil. Greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah, let me tell you, when you serve God, there is no demon in hell that can gain the victory over your life. The Bible tells me, amen, that when you are a child of God, resist the devil and he's going to have to flee from you. Insist, insist, hallelujah, amen, amen. I'm not giving you one inch, devil, praise God. And, and Pharaoh said, serve God in the land, stay in Egypt. No, hallelujah, amen, amen. Stay in Egypt. No, I'm not staying in Egypt. So, hear what he says in, in chapter 8 and verse 28. This is, what, this is what he now tells them. Uh, yes, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far. Hallelujah. Don't, uh, you know, um, too many people who name the name of Christ have never gone very far away from the former things. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a trick of the devil. Amen. Pharaoh said, don't go very far. And I, I want to look at a third one. If you... Go to um, chapter 10, verse 10. Chapter 10 and verse 10. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go, 
as if <laughs> as if you have a uh, you know it's in your power as i will let you go and your little ones look to it for it is evil before you and maybe the language of the king james version is not very clear in this verse but you know what pharaoh said i'll let you go but let your children stay. That's what that part says. Hallelujah. If not, if not, you're in trouble. Hallelujah. Are you hearing that? Let me tell you. My children growing up, no. Church time, you're in church. Hallelujah. My daughter give me an eye. <laughs> because there have been times with, with some of my children that when it was church time, they wanted to be involved in something else. Hallelujah. Church time is church time. Praise the Lord. Let me speak to you as a parent. And, and, and what applies, you know, everybody know about protocol nowadays. That word protocol, everybody using it because of corona. For some people, it's the first time that they're talking about a protocol. I'm going to tell you the protocol in, in my house. You can't be sleeping on my bed. Eating my food. Using my electricity. That I pay for. Bathing with water that I pay for. And when it is time for church, oh, my friends have a little picnic. It's not anything. Eh? I, I, hallelujah. Uh, if I can go. No! Hallelujah! But daddy, everybody going to be there. So, everybody not going to make it into heaven. Praise God. So he, 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 he said, leave the little ones here. No! God. In, in verse 11, he says, he says, only the men should go. Now so go now, ye that are men. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says as much as possible, live in peace with all men. But sometimes the, 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 the word of God is like a sword. And hallelujah, you need to stand up for what is right and let your children know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My two sons will remember the times in, in church when they got a little bit out of hand. I would step down from the pulpit and go at the back and give them, hallelujah, two on, you know, the place where God made for, for you to take a good Lash, you know, that nice, flat, fleshy bottom. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, Pastor Moses had a tough time. He was a no-compromiser preacher. Pastoring a bunch of uncommitted people. What a tough time he had. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then, you know what happened? <coughs> we come to chapter 10. Where the Bible tells me, you see what, hallelujah? You are gaining ground. You are gaining ground, brother. Hallelujah. 
first of all, he said, praise God, stay in the land. They said, no, amen, hallelujah. Let me tell you, you're going to be better tomorrow. It's not going to happen all in one day. You're going to be better tomorrow. You will get a greater victory over the devil. Just keep fighting the battle. Just keep seeking God. Just keep, amen, trying to do the best that you can for the living God. The Spirit of God is going to help you. Hallelujah. Amen. You preach a message that in Jesus we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Through him that loved us. So he, he first of all said, stay in the land. And he said, don't go too far. Then he said, let your children stay. And we come to chapter 10, where he tells them, well, everybody can go. But in verse 26, or, or verse 25, he said, go. But leave your cattle. I want you to realize the attitude of Moses in serving God. And the devil wants you to leave everything behind when you go to serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can go yourself, but... My car is not involved in this. My house is not in, my money is not, amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the house of God. I'm going to serve God. Hallelujah. And that's what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said, yes, you can go, but leave everything behind. But here is Moses' attitude. Moses said, hallelujah, we not leaving one hoof behind. And why did he say that? Hallelujah. Was he saying that? In, in, to tell Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh, we're not leaving anything for you. No, that was not the attitude. The attitude is, we are going to serve God. We are going to serve God. And, and you want to hear something about serving God? He said, when we get to the place where God has commanded us to go, we have no clue what God is going to ask us to offer. We have no clue. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, we need to need to have that kind of attitude in our life concerning serving God. Hallelujah. I believe in a living God. When we reopen church and you come to the house of God, come with an attitude, I don't know what God is going to call upon me to do. Hallelujah. But in my mind and in my heart, I'm bringing everything in my life before God. You see, because there are people, when you come before God, hallelujah, God's going to tell you, that job you're working at, I, I want it. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. There may be somebody, hallelujah, who has a little money set aside somewhere. And you have big plans for that money. But what is my attitude? I don't know what God is going to require of me. So I'm bringing everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes you're in a, relation a relationship and you think all is well with that relationship. Praise God. You, you, you have somebody and you eyeing that person. And maybe you are hoping that it's going to develop to the place where the two of you can go to the altar and exchange vows and become a man and wife. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, when you go to serve God, you are bringing everything. And you, uh, hallelujah. Because at the back of your mind, I don't know what God is going to require of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that was the attitude of Moses. Moses' attitude was we going to worship God and we leaving absolutely nothing behind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes you, and, um, you know, before this situation, you plan a vacation that you're going to go 
Um, for people, a vacation is going to New York. There are so many other places to go. Uh, and they go, they go there one time, they go two times, they go three times, and next time they're still going to New York. And uh, uh, um, There are other places you can visit. But by the way, um, you know, you're making your plan. Hallelujah. And I want to come back uh, next time and talk about something else, uh, something that the Lord is dealing with me about, the still small voice of God, the still small voice. Hallelujah. The still, some of you get the message already and you're going to meditate on that for a while. The, when, when Elijah was in the cave and it was a still spo- a small voice of God that spoke to him and, and, and you're planning that, that vacation. Uh, you know, uh, hallelujah, when you go to the house of God, hallelujah, even that vacation, you are carrying it before God. Because what? I don't know. Uh, hallelujah. Maybe the Lord, uh, praise God, maybe you plan to go to New York, but God wants you to go to Barbados and minister. Praise the name of Jesus. You want to go and visit family? Amen. Hallelujah. In Canada, praise the Lord. But God wants you to go to Guyana. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, Moses stood his ground with Pharaoh. And you know the end of the story. He came out victorious. When the children of Israel Finally, resist the devil, brother. Resist the devil, sister. Resist the devil, you person who have not made a commitment to serve God. Hallelujah. Because as surely as the children of Israel got deliverance from Pharaoh in Egypt, you go to get deliverance from Almighty God if you stand your ground and you said, God has called me to serve him. Hallelujah. And they went out of Egypt, amen, with the mighty right hand of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Fire, amen, leading them. And and a pillar of smoke leading them. The seas parting for them to cross over on dry land. Manna coming from heaven every day. Hallelujah. The rock, amen, issuing forth water for them because, let me tell you, I've spoken about that God says, Amen. You're going to serve me, but you know what it really was? When you serve God, it's a feast. The Bible tells me that he prepared a table for them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. God gave them the victory over the enemies as they wandered in the wilderness. And that's what God wants to do in your life in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you all, I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, Help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold. If my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. Oh, I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, 
I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, I pray that we may be the kind of people who seek to give you everything. Lord, who seek to serve you with all that we are and all that we have. We thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. In Jesus' name.